listen everybody to the words I have to say Better get ready Because the Lord is coming one day Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Report number 99. This is Daniel White III here to remind you that Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions nor is it about setting dates. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. A pattern of judgment based on the Jewish calendar has some people suspecting that a major financial calamity will strike the U.S. in September of 2015. This is speculation, but according to World Net Daily, the best-selling Christian book, The Harbinger, by Jonathan Kahn, points out that America's two greatest financial shakings occurred on successive Hebrew Shemitah years following the 9-11 terror attacks. This pattern of recent economic disasters based on the Hebrew calendar portends what some suspect will be the biggest U.S. financial calamity yet on September the 13th, 2015. While Khan prefers not to speculate on what, if anything, might befall America on September the 13th, 2015, it will be the next Shemitah year which occurs on Elul 29 every seven years on the Hebrew calendar. It is a time when debts are to be forgiven and the land and the agricultural communities of ancient Israel were to be given a rest. September the 17th, 2001 was the beginning of the economic calamity associated with 9-11 and the lowering of interest rates by the Fed 
resulting in the collapse of the stock market um, as well. September the 17th, 2001 was a little 29 on the Hebrew calendar. Likewise, September the 29th, 2008 marked the next big crash. Uh, September the 29th, 2008 also fell on Elon 29. Uh, Joseph Farah, editor of World Net Daily, believes the date of September the 13th, 2015 bears close watching, though he is quick to admit he has no idea what, if anything, will happen in America. He says a clear pattern has been established. I don't believe it's a coincidence what happened in America on Elal 29 in 2001 and 2008. It would be foolish to ignore the possibility that a greater judgment might be in the works, especially if America continues to move away from God and His Word. Secondly today, secondly today, Qatar's ruler says Israel will face increased pressures as fallout from the Arab Spring. According to the Associated Press, Qatar's ruler says Israel is more isolated by the Arab Spring and will face increasing pressures over issues such as its presumed nuclear arsenal. Sheikh Ahmad bin Khalifa urged Israel's leaders to view the Middle East uprisings as an opportunity for serious peace talks with the Palestinians. The fall of Egypt's Hosni Mubarak last year wiped away Israel's main Arab ally, and Qatar's Emir predicts the region's new governments will press Israel harder over its policies, including a widely suspected nuclear arms program. Thirdly today, U.S. lawmakers approve the use of force as an option in dealing with Iran. According to the AFP, the U.S. House of Representatives approved the U.S., or rather the use of force against Iran if the Tehran regime threatens the United States and or its allies with nuclear weapons. According to a section of the National Defense Authorization Act, it shall be the policy of the United States to take all necessary measures, including military action if necessary, to prevent Iran from threatening the United States, its allies, or Iran's neighbors with a nuclear weapon. Lawmakers by a vote of 299 to 120, passed the sweeping legislation which sets out a total of $642.5 billion in military expenditures for the coming fiscal year. You can read these stories in depth and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of of prophecy, uh, the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. 
Our topic for today is titled, The Statements of the Son Demand That Jesus Come Back. The Statements of the Son Demand That Jesus Come Back. Part 2 from John MacArthur's book, The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. MacArthur writes the following on this subject. The transfiguration of Christ had a tremendous impact on Peter's ministry. He was continually preaching that Jesus was coming back and people were probably always coming up to him and saying, Oh, Peter, that's an old wives tale he's not coming back why do you believe all that stuff so in second peter chapter 1 he says this for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our lord jesus christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. When Peter talked about the second coming, he knew what he was talking about because he saw Jesus in his second coming glory. Verse 17 continues, For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. In other words, Peter is saying, I'm not just shooting off my mouth. I was there. I saw a glimpse of the second coming glory. Believe me, Jesus is coming. It's no fairy tale. Jesus embedded in the mind of Peter and for all time in the pages of the Holy Scriptures, the visible illustration of the fact that he's coming again, again in glory. Of the fact that he's coming again in glory. So the promise of the Father and the statements of the Son as well as his living illustration, demand that Jesus return to earth. In closing, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. <clears throat> God wants us to be active and engaged in spiritual warfare in the last days. In light of that, please listen to what Dr. David Jeremiah writes in his book titled, I Never Thought I'd See the Day. And let, and let me be clear about that statement. God wants us uh, to be aware that we are in spiritual warfare in the last days. Uh, in light of... Uh, that, please listen to what Dr. David Jeremiah writes in his uh, interesting book titled, I Never Thought I'd See the Day. And in this particular chapter, uh, he goes on to say, when Christians wouldn't know they were in a war. In other words, he is saying, I never thought I'd see the day. Uh, when Christians wouldn't know they were in a war. Part 8. Satan uh, as an undetected enemy. Satan as an undetected enemy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, two factors enable Satan to remain so undetected. First, he is a, a spirit being. We cannot apprehend him with our physical senses. And in today's climate of empiricism, 
Uh, people have trouble believing in a spirit world. Second, he clothes himself in the images of this world that people perceive as good, noble, attractive, or uplifting. Art, literature, entertainment, education, and scholarship. I want to repeat that. Please get this. First, Satan is a spirit being. We cannot apprehend him with our physical senses. And in today's climate of empiricism, people have trouble believing in a spirit world. This is one of the reasons why Satan remains undetected by many Christians. Secondly, Satan clothes himself in the images of this world that people perceive as good, uh, noble, attractive, or uplifting, such as art, literature, entertainment, education, and scholarship. How many impressionable students have lost their faith under the influence of a learned college professor who mocked the idea of God? How much indecency do we intolerate? Or rather, how, how much indecency do we tolerate in the name of art, which elevates creativity above the rules? of morality. How many Christians are passively lulled into accepting perversions as normal when they are presented hour after hour on television, such as homosexuality, I might add. Satan's influence has become pervasive in many of the institutions we want to look to as noble, enlightening, or entertaining. Until we see through this deception and wake up to its insidious effects on us, we are in danger, and few of us seem to notice. Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray together. We praise you and we thank you for your unchanging holy word. And we thank you for what you have done on the cross for our sins. Thank you for shedding your blood and for submitting yourself to such ungodly treatment so that you can save the ungodly. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you for your mercy and grace. And Lord, uh, there are many of us as Christians who are excited about your second coming and who love your second coming. We thank you for what our hearts have heard and, and our hearts have felt today. Lord, help us to take heed to it and to do the things that we should do here in these last days. Help us to truly believe by faith that you're coming again. And then, Lord, help us to act like it by being engaged in spiritual warfare understanding that we're in warfare, understanding that the enemy exists and he's acting crazier than he's ever acted, trying to discourage us and hinder us in these last days. Help us to be encouraged by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you're listening to this broadcast 
and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God wants you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior before he returns. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, and 13 that if thou, you, shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, friend of mine, if you're willing to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please pray with me the following simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner. I've done bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life forever. Amen. Dear friend, in closing, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye holy. Uh, Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, BCNNRadio7.com, GospelLightWorldRadio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now, here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight. Don't